Hello and welcome. It's the Tachi Ai crew. We're back again, and this time we're talking about the upcoming Aki Basho in Tokyo. And it's one of our favorites because many times people talk about wacky Aki, because it seems that almost anything can happen, and sometimes anything does. Joining me is a creator of Tachi Ai, Andy. Say hello, Andy. Hey, Andy. How are you? <laughs> Nice. And the man typically in foreign lands, Mr. Josh. Josh, how you doing today? Hey, what's up, guys? Doing pretty good. I'm, I'm delighted that uh, the both of you can join me here today on Tachiai because we've got, uh, we've got a full slate of stuff. Um, folks tuning in, you'll actually see three different segments published on three different days because, as everybody knows, we love to talk about Sumo. And so we're going to break it up into parts. So look for the other parts showing up soon. So first of all, let's talk about the Nagoya Basho. I mean, Nagoya was kind of, I mean, it's weird to say this. It was trend setting. It was different because they actually held it outside of Tokyo. They actually traveled up to the mountains and held a tournament somewhere other than the Kokugi-Kan for the first time in a couple of years. Um, and it was, a, it, it was a whale of a tournament. We had a final day, final match fight to see who would finish 15 and 0 between the uh, the the Iron Man of sumo at this point, Hakuho, and and uh, sort of uh, the <laughs> the bounce back king of all sports, Terna Fuji. Um, Josh, thoughts about Nagoya? It was kind of it was kind of a, a welcome return to the past and kind of different in a few ways. What were your what were you thinking about it? I think it's good that there was a lot of intrigue all the way through. Yeah. And, fact that you know we went to the last day with two guys 14 and 0 it happened to be the two guys ranked at the top of the Banzuke. um you know there was a lot on the line for Terra no Fuji there was a lot on the line for Hakuho it yep. could have been argued. and I think it's good I, I don't want to start this on too much of a downer but I think you know what was revealed maybe sort of the subtext of that is that you know look back to when this site got very popular I mean three four years ago the quality of the top division then I think was a little bit yeah you know, a little bit a lot better than it is now and I think that revealed itself in some of the results and some of the ways that the <laughs> opponent attacked Terano Fuji and in particular yeah. Hakuho. so it, it's good that, that I think it's good that that storyline was there and that we had things to look for and things to talk about because if that had not been the case and someone would have just come out and steamrolled the field and won the the, the U show by day twelve. Uh, I don't think it would have been as satisfying as it was uh, at, at the end of the fifteen days. Yeah, I, I definitely completely in agreement. So Josh touched on a great subject, which is the quality of the competition. We had a bunch of of the competitors in the Joy Gin just get completely blown out. I mean, hopeful. I mean, everyone loves Wakataka Kagi, not the least of which because Raja like tends to fire it off like a machine gun several times per match. He finished at five and 10 and just completely blew out. Daesho the same. I mean, that guy's got a Yusho. He was five and 10. He got completely flushed down the loo. Endo went one and four before he decided he was going Kyujo and finished Nagoya with just a single win. Toby Zaro, of course, who's a, a bit, you know, we, we talked about it in, in our Nagoya podcast is that he was over promoted, but four and eleven, and then it, it broke my heart. Koto Echo at two and thirteen. Dear Lord, Andy, what what were your impressions about the the competition uh, at Nagoya? I mean, I was kind of expecting Koto Echo, <clears throat> but I was really sad for Takakesho because I mean it, that was just such a innocuous hit from Ichinojo at the Tachi Ai. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, like you said, that that was, it was just so much um, intrigue and so much drama and everybody that we were kind of expecting, um, uh, expecting there to be at the final weekend wasn't there. And it was really just left up to Hakuho, Terano Fuji. Yep. Hakuho was the massive question mark for the whole tournament. And then he comes through and wins Zensho Yusho. I mean, he couldn't even keep it bottled in there at the end with his yep. exuberant celebration. But then, I mean, you add in that that uh, Shodai Tachi Ai, and <laughs> it's like hey, everybody had. I mean, I, it seemed like 
social media had their daggers set right at Hakuho. Oh, they after, did. After uh, at the that final weekend, and to me, I I felt like he he feels the same way that the competition is not as impressive as it should be that Shodai for one is somebody who we've been kind of making a joke of his tachi eye to begin with and he kind of set out this message of you Ozeki need to come to me I am not going to go to you and he kind of forced Shodai to to move forward a bit at his tachi eye and it's just, I think that um, what Josh said is right on point, that there's been a, um, uh, I guess, a shift in the talent. And um, unfortunately, where we used to have a lot of the, um, the questions around Yokozuna, now the questions are starting to be around Ozeki and with everybody underneath it's not that certain who wants to show up and and take that mantle it'll be interesting to see if Mese does so there's only uh, oh, there's only two Yokozuna remaining at this point and one of them one of them left the tournament with possibly neurological damage um, and you know people I know who are medical professionals who love sumo, they 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 got very attentive when they talked to, when they heard about uh, um, Takakesho having that sort of electric jolt go through his body, because that's usually an indication that there's there's a problem here. But uh, I um, react to, um, to one thing that Andy said real quick. Sure. That's it. We made fun of, uh, we talk about Ozeki, we, we made fun of this guy for a lot of years, not just us, a lot of people in sumo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to the Kataban twins and all this kind of stuff. You want to talk about Goedo? He would be, without question, the most, you know, assertive Ozeki that we could possibly have in sumo right now. I mean, he, so you know, Takeshi, as you mentioned, he's got his not only this 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 injury, he's got his injury problems. Shodai, you know, is lucky he wasn't Kataban again. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, we would always sit here and be like, oh my gosh, what's going on, Goedo? And it was just always about. Goedo had so much ability uh, that he didn't deliver on, and he practiced so hard and never translated to the tournament. Yep. But we would love to have a Nozeki like Goedo right now. You know what you know? the thing, the one of the greatest things about Goedo is he showed up, right? Yeah. Goedo showed up, and that that's so important in so many fields of life. But talking about people who freaking showed up, Terano Fuji, he... I, mean, I, I know I've gushed about Terano Fuji for more than the past year, but the man finally was awarded Yokozuna. It was well-deserved, even though he did not take the Yusho away from Hakaho. I mean, 14-1 finish. What more are you going to do? Um, you fought the, 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 the greatest of all, Dai Yokozuna. Um, and, you know, it was a little bit overshadowed by the Olympics and the sort of the, the, the blaze of COVID that's going on in Japan, um, but I, I really don't think it should reduce the fact that this man came back from a career destroying injury that saw him push to the you know one of the lowest ranks in sumo, and then he just fought his way back up. I don't know, Josh, am I being too too uh, um, sentimental about this, or or is this a big deal? I think it is a big deal. I think it's always a big deal when you have a new Yokozuna, right? But. It's interesting because when, at least when I watched him perform the, you know, Doyo Iri at, at Meiji Jingu Shrine, for people who don't know, you know, whenever there's a new Yokozuna, they perform the ring entering ceremony for the first time, uh, usually in front of a crowd, not so much this time for, for Terano Fuji. Well, he, the, he performed it in front of a big wooden post. In front of a big wooden post. <laughs> or behind that, a big wooden you, you, post. I, you're just talking about Shibatayama, you know? <laughs> 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 Never mind the rest of the... Uh, the other guys on uh, on looking, but um, but anyway, you know, I, we were all speculating beforehand. You know, what's going to happen to this guy and his knees when he when he actually first yeah. has to start doing the doyo iri on a regular basis? And I think, you know, you watch it and you think, oh boy, that that's not going to be good for him. Fifteen days in a tournament, you know, 
of course, he does Chico all the time. He does a very managed Keiko program, as we know, to get himself back up to health after all those injuries that he had. Um, but I think that that, you know, that sort of debate takes away from, as you mentioned, this monumental achievement. Um, and, you know, whether he is able to develop a rivalry with Hakuho over the year. Oh, yeah. The most that Hakuho has left. Um, or whether he's able to sort of kick this, you know, permanent Nokozuna period that we've been dreading into the distance for another year or two. It's not really about that. I think whatever he does now is the cherry on the icing on the yep. cake because he's already written a fantastic story and hopefully he's able to deliver um, an exciting Yokozuna tenure for however long that lasts. Yep. So, so Andy, he's got Japanese citizenship now. Um, I mean, he really seems to have a plan and he's running it, which is amazing considering how different it is from when he first became a big deal in sumo. I don't know. Give us your comments on Yokozuna Teranofuji. I'm really hopeful that he gets to live this out in front of a full Kokugikan because yeah. we need to be able to have like the all of the fans back in there and enjoying his Yokozuna um, reign. Uh, and I'm not sure how many months like or how many tournaments it's going to take until we get there. The good thing yeah. about him being Yokozuna is that if he does have a bit of an injury or whatever, I really hope that they manage the injury in a way that's better than uh, the way that Kisen Osato handled his. Um, so, and- I mean, Taganura versus Isigahama, there is no comparison. Isigahama... I mean, he has proven himself to be a master Oyakata. I mean, really, everyone, Oyakatas to come need to need to learn from him and follow his example. Well, and that's another one where I feel bad. He had his Kanraki Dojo Iri supposed to be last year. Yeah. And uh, that had to get pushed back. It was kind of, the, um, they're, they're doing it the same time, I guess, as, as when Terano Fuji got his rope. But it's like, they didn't get to enjoy it in front of the crowd. They yeah. didn't have like the the full sellout. I mean, I imagine they're losing out on a lot of a lot of um, ticket sales. Income. Yeah, it, it, t- but, it, Sumo's broken right now. It, and, there's and no other way to put I it. I think that they're gonna, regardless of what goes on with um, with COVID over in Japan. I mean, they're gonna still have to uh, try to pack in as many fans as they can if it's up to that five thousand limit. Um, I do. I really think that. Terano Fuji will be a um, a great PR campaign, and you've kind of already seen it with there was a, that epic photo of him kind of presiding over his, uh, the Keiko, um, like without the the um, knee braces on, his barrel chested like a um, like a Disney hero. I was kind of he was kind of <laughs> giving off like those those Gaston at like oh freaking Gaston, Gaston. Airs there. And, and you just kind of feel that he needs to be able to enjoy this. He should be able to enjoy this with the full crowd, having the tours, having the adulation and stuff like that. It's kind of, I don't know, just annoying to have it all bottled up. Yep. So hopefully so, so, they'll be able to get it out. So pro tip to all of our viewers, if you happen to go to a Disney theme park and you encounter the Gaston character, do not accept his challenges to feats of strength. It doesn't turn out well. That just don't do it. Um, but from from the highs, let's go to the lows. Um, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because I think the guy's a scumbag. Taka Genji thrown out of sumo for smoking pot. Uh, I know in the in the United States it's no big deal anymore. Everyone's sort of like, oh, whatever, man, reefer. Japan is still a very big deal. If any of you uh, are fond of of herbal medicine and organic y sort of danky things like that and you're going to Japan at some day should we ever get to go back to Japan don't take it not a pleasant experience and Takagenji's out and good riddance to him because he had been in trouble in the past for being basically a bastard I don't know um Josh anything you want to add to that you took the words out of my mouth good riddance I mean obviously he and his brother had a history of bullying uh, there are question marks about some of his social media behavior in the past, which might have been xenophobic, would be putting it kindly. Uh, you know, there's a saying, snitches get stitches. And so 
he cannot have been well liked if it's true that his fellow Rikishi snitched on him uh, in order to uh, pass on the news that he was uh, smoking weed. And then obviously he lied about it, which shows in light of every other recent punishment that we've seen for lying that there was not a lot going on upstairs. So <laughs> from a pure sumo perspective, he was someone with a lot of talent and he also never realized the sumo talent that he had. Nope. Uh, so is the sumo world poorer for his absence? I would say no. Nope. Get lost, asshole. I don't know, Andy, anything you want to add to that? No, nah, I mean, I'd have been hoping for an, a redemption story at some point, but it seemed like, regardless of the fact that his brother had gone through a very similar fall, he didn't seem to learn from it, and unfortunately his Oyakata had to be punished, and I'd take some of that punishment too. Yeah, well, and that, it, that it was, was unfortunate. Because he, he, I mean, he did not recruit them. They were recruited by Takanahana, and yep. when all of the Takanahana business uh, came up, Tokiwayama took them in, and now he's kind of having to um, deal with the, uh, the the punishment of some of their misbehavior, which is very unfortunate. But yeah, I, I'd hope that there could be a good ending from that, but. Um, unfortunately, the good ending seems to be maybe they'll find another career somewhere else. So my my uh, what I always found interesting when I was so fortunate as to go to Japan and watch sumo was the body language of whoever was facing Takagenji. He was not liked. Um, they did not like him at all. But let's go on to uh, well, let's go on to another story that um, I hope will have a happy ending ending. Um, and that's Hokuseho, who's unfortunately seems to be an isolated ca uh, an isolated case of, of COVID-19. Um, no one else at the Heia, which is you know, Hakaho's Heia, it's uh, Miyagano's, has tested positive so far. But it looks like there might be some question around whether or not those guys will participate. Um, the guy's enormous. He's had a huge run up the Banzuke. I mean, he's freaking two meters, and uh, the guy is huge. He's made it up now to Jurio 12, and everyone's really in, looking forward to see what he now does as a Sekitori. Um, we'll go back to Josh again. Josh, I know you've you've had your eye on this guy for a while. Give us your thoughts. Hopefully we see him. Obviously, we talk about him all the time, as you say. Uh, he's just another in Incredible recruit from Hakuho who has mowed his way through the lower divisions. Uh, he's probably someone we fully expect to see become Heiagashira before too long, yep. considering the fact that Hakuho is not long for uh, for the rope and uh, Ishiura and Enho are the only guys ahead of him in the stable. So, you know, the question with him has always been whether his technique can match his physique, and he's had some challenges adjusting to to better competition. I think, you know, the big question really is, how is the Sumo Association gonna handle this? Because Miyagi Nobea was held out uh, due to COVID incidents earlier this year when Hakuo had it and other people had it in the stable. And you're reaching a point now where are you gonna have to hold out an entire stable for an entire tournament? Uh, there had been a quote attributed to Shibatayama, which was, you know, maybe he can enter later in the tournament, but if you do that, how can you handle yep. promotions and demotions in a way that's fair? It's not only the Rikishi concerned, in this case, Hokusei, who's at the bottom of Jurio and you know, his salary's on the line now and everything else, uh, but the other guys in the division. You know, if you treat a four and three like you would treat an eight and seven, is that fair to someone who's on the heaven and hell line trying to scratch out eight wins over 15 days. I don't know, right? We, we don't know. Or do they go, well, you've only got four wins, so we're going to treat it like a four and 11 and have fun in Makusta. So I think that's really the big thing. The good news is, you know, Hokusei was only, what, 19, 20, something yeah. like that. Um, you know, it, it, whatever happens after this tournament, it's not going to stop him from coming back to Jurio, or at least it shouldn't. Uh, but yeah, we've been waiting to see him in in uh, in the Shimekomi in in uh, in a proper Mawashi at the at the proper business end of the day, and we want to see him take on real uh, high quality opponents and raise his level. And so hopefully he will recover, and there won't be any other issues, and we'll get to see that happen this time. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. 
Uh, to go back to one of the earlier themes, Sumo seems to be broken. What are you going to do with this guy? Or what are you going to do with his stable? Um, Andy, thoughts about uh, how COVID continues to overshadow our favorite sport? And unfortunately, Hokuseho is seemingly always kind of at the epicenter of it. Uh, he had his Yusho streak broken the first time that they um, that they had that little outbreak at Miyagi no Bea. We, you have uh, to understand, and, though, there's so much of him. He pres- provides a lot of surface area for the damn thing to target. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I mean, he, he on that topic, he's definitely he reminds me of Akebono. Just yeah. The, oh, yeah. The way that, and then his his style of being able to like kind of reach over the back and uh, to grab the mawashi. But I did, I do worry about his back a bit uh, with the uh, heavier rikishi, and so uh, I'm very hopeful that he will be able to rise up uh, the Banzuke quite a bit further and pretty quickly. I'm also optimistic that this will just be a little hitch and that hopefully uh like josh alluded to they'll be able to figure out a solution that's fair i don't know if maybe he will be the only one that's held out of the uh the full tournament but it'll be interesting to see because it the diagnosis was or i mean the positive uh case came substantially ahead of the tournament so i don't i don't know whether they would be able to say that oh the rest of the stable was able to um i guess have a 10-day quarantine and so they're good uh-huh. maybe we just hold back hokuseho i don't know i think that all of them will be held out for the whole tournament yeah. um, because that's what we've seen so far and it's done it's happened to that stable before and that's what they did they kept everybody's uh, status for the next tournament, and I, I think that maybe he will just be able to come back. He'll prepare, I guess, for November um, instead of Aki. So I'm um, going to go on to a, a one last sumo news topic, and that's uh, that Arioso, um former Kisun Osato, has opened his, uh, his new stable, or at least they're working to open the new stable. Um, and it's way the hell out at the ass end of Ibaraki. Um, I've noticed that a number of stables are moving back closer um, to Sumida, but he's he, you know, he's he's a big train right away. It looks like he's got a bunch of innovative ideas. I mean, everyone hopes that he might be able to do um, some interesting new things in sumo. But um, are are we uh, are we overthinking this one, Andy? I think he needed to be able to find a place to afford. Uh, right now, I don't think that the money is coming in with no fans. Yeah. And so he needed to be able to find a place to build a, a, a stable big enough to, to fit his dream of um, having the two dojo for, um, uh, for practicing on. And yeah, the distance yeah. is out there. It, he, he will be the farthest stable out there when they, I mean, they did the groundbreaking last month or whatever at the permanent place. They'll be at another place that's a little bit closer in and it's on the Scuba Express. Uh, the, the, it's still a long ride. Yeah, it, it'll be it'll be a hike. Fortunately, the, um, well, I don't know about fortunately, but the wrestlers that he's got right now are pretty low ranked and so they yep. won't be coming in and making that commute every day uh it'll be an every other day yeah but it'll be a very early train that's gonna be a so, really early train yeah i mean it <laughs> hopefully they'll um like you said the other stables have found a way to kind of move in closer to uh to koku Gikan, and maybe especially since Koku Gikan is only the site for, in a normal year, three tournaments. Uh, he might be able to find more affordable temporary lodgings in the other locations. Yeah. Um, and then uh, bring him his his permanent headquarters in closer later on when uh, fans are back in the seats. All right, Josh, thoughts about Arioso's new stable? 
I love it. I love everything about it except for the location for selfish reasons. But I understand why he did it. Obviously, people don't know Kisano Sato, the former Kisano Sato's from Ibaraki Prefecture. He's invested in building a place that's quite near to his hometown, if not in his hometown. Uh, so he can at least rely on the, the local support. Um, I, I even think so. I even think the location's pretty intelligent. He's just thought everything through really well. It's yep. very clear already that he's going to be a leader among this new generation of Oyakata. And what a breath of fresh air he's been. He's a very candid speaker and full of interesting thinking. As Andy mentioned, he's going with two doyos in, in the new Heia and you know, cameras and be filming these guys and he's trying to make it an actual destination for people yep. with a gift shop. Uh, so I'm this going. Is all really interesting <laughs> stuff. Oh, go ahead, Bruce. I said, no, I'm going to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. And it makes a real change because for people who walk through Tokyo or try to go to Morning Keiko or, yep. or any of these kinds of things, the atmosphere is not always welcoming at these places. And he's obviously looked at this and gone, you know what, actually, uh, we can make something out of this and we can bring more people into yep. the sumo experience if we invest in building an experience, which is something that they're going to want. Uh, so, as Andy mentioned, they've broken ground, they're off and running, and good luck to him. I think the biggest question is, you know, when he's recruiting, uh, he's really got to sell that. He's got to sell himself, he's got to sell the location and this new way of thinking, because uh, he's certainly not going to attract 18-year-old kids based on the location of the Haya and then all the nightlife that's going to be happening <laughs> around it. Not that they should be doing that right now, anyway. All right, Josh, I have to disagree with you on one point. That's not the biggest question. The biggest question is Okami-san. Oh, that is a big question. So oh. um, there is no answer to that one. We'll leave it hanging out there like a uh, um, someone breaking wind in an elevator. And we're going to close out this segment by um, saying, I want to say thank you to all of you who have uh, who have been watching us, not only because now we're freaking 28 minutes worth of video or so, but because um, we're over a thousand subscribers. Um, it's another milestone in Tachi Ai where you had a bunch of sumo fans get together, write on a blog, talk into cameras once in a while, and I simply can't believe how many people will actually put up with this, and dare I say a few of them actually enjoy it. Um, Josh, anything you want to say about going over a thousand subscribers on, on YouTube? Yeah, it's exciting. I, I'm, obviously, we're all very thankful for everybody who subscribed and whether it's YouTube or on the podcast or you watch it on the website yep. or however it is that you enjoy content from Tachi, I think it's uh, it's really great and it speaks to the fact that even though we can't all get to Japan right now and to watch Sumo in person, people are still really excited to talk about it and to listen about it and yep. uh, hopefully we can do more. All right, Andy, this was your creation. Milestone, that was the word I was trying to think of earlier. That right. was, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it, congratulations. That is, it, it's very encouraging because, I, well, that's why I, I started, like, I even thought about the site was because I needed to be able to enjoy the sport with more people. And yep. it's just like, there, there's more and more people out there. And it's very exciting to see just more interest and more very intelligent interest yes. in the sport because there's no way I, mean, I I definitely do not consider myself an expert in the sport it's great to hear from other people who um, I mean I'm just a fan and it's very nice to be able to kind of engage with people who are like the real experts in the sport and who are able to talk um, uh, about it and in a way that's not um, the, the fat guys in diapers, like <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, stereotypes, and so no, I I love the fact that um, just sumo fandom is growing. Yep. So um, with that, we're going to close out segment one. I want to say thank you to uh, Josh and thank you to Andy and thank you to all of you, not just for watching us, but for uh, um, getting us to this uh, milestone, if you will. Uh, and remember, Aki Basho coming up soon, and for sumo, it's Tachi Ai. Thanks, Bruce.